So you may have just seen me uh, faffing about with the propeller here and um, I was having slight fit issues to get um, the nose cone to fit to the back plate there to fit nice and flush um, and uh, I want to paint these parts separately and then bring them together so I just want to dab a bit of um, Tammy Extra Fin to keep the uh, paint looking alright. So uh, the issue was it took a bit of working out basically these two parts go together flushly, no problem. Then these two parts go together flush, again, no issue, but it was when you brought the three together. And what it turns out to be is there is a little bit of flash around here. So it, it doesn't hurt to clean those up just with a knife, but in one of these, this one here, there was a, a little um, piece of plastic for some reason, like a little uh, locating pin almost. Uh, just in there, so I just nip that out, and um, the fit is uh, well, ten times better straight off. And I think I might work at that a little bit more, just to try and get it to knit down, because it's not going together as well as it does without the propeller in the middle. You do need to sort of force it together. So it shouldn't be the case; it should all just fall together. So I'm going to persevere with this bit, and then um, we're starting to rapidly come to the end of the build there. So. Uh, We'll have a look at the parts left and then um, start thinking about getting some primer on and checking all the um, seams and panel lines etc.
So uh, as you can see here, I've really cracked on with the build now. Um, I've prepped it all for uh, paintwork now. And um, I've just used a bit of tissue there in the wheel well uh, to block that off. And used a bit of mask oil just to get down the um, sort of fluffy bits to stop uh, bits of tissue ending up in the paint. Um, I've checked all the seams as best as I can. And um, now is the final process when I, I'm going to use, um, as I've mentioned before, my Surfacer 1200. I, I prefer 1200 as opposed to 500 because 1500 uh, because you can still sort of work it down. Um, it's not too fine. It's still got filling properties, so um, I don't need it extra fi uh, fine. Maybe if you're doing a metal finish, if you had the 1500 black, for instance, that might be um, a bit better for that. But for this, um, it should do quite well just to kind of level the surface all over. Um, there's a canopy on there, obviously. This is the closed option. So I've put that on, just tacked it down with a bit of PVA glue, and then put mask oil in around the join, just to try and make sure we don't get any paint inside there. And then once the painting's done, that will come off, and this one will be put on right at the end. Um, obviously, if you're doing this, you've got to um, make sure you remember to paint this the same colour as you're doing the rest of it. So it tones it all in. And I've put a little card tube just in there to um, fill that gap so that is not seamless but it doesn't matter if a little bit of paint goes in there um, you're not going to get much at all uh, so once the um, fill is on the Mr Surfacer uh, we'll have a better idea of uh, how the build's looking and then um, progress into paint and the progress on the um, Focke Wolf here so this has all been sprayed in Mr Surfacer 1200 and um, it gives a really nice finish and allows you to see what's going on. So now you can really see the riveting detail there. I don't know if it will pick it up on camera too well, but it's very clear from my point of view. And also the, the main point to this, an aspect where this is um, really useful, is for showing up the seam lines. So um, there is some good news and some bad news here. So the good news is this seam line's absolutely fine. So that's ready just to be rescribed with a I think it's just a single panel line there to go across which is nice and then just a bit of riveting um, everything's fine around the wing joins and around the cowling no problem here on the wing roots this is all absolutely fine um, there are a few small gaps around the cowlings but after um, I went to Cosford recently and um, had a look at the Fokker Wolf and all the other planes that are there and of course obviously they're you know 70 odd years old or whatever it is um but it is interesting to see even on the um even on um the 109 black 6 which is obviously quite you know been done up quite recently um there are gaps on panel lines things aren't absolutely um perfectly shut so i don't mind um where there's a few cowlings if there's just a slight gap around the corner or it's slightly raised um you know i think it adds to the effect uh, so that I'm happy to leave it in, but if you want to, you know, you can work around that. There aren't glaring gaps, I'm just saying there's a, a tiny little gap here, which I think actually looks quite normal. Um, so, just things to think about. Um, I do have... Uh, where's it gone now? Yes, yeah, so I've got a seam line here, so this is the only one to clean up. The one back there, and this is what I've explained previously in the video, where um, there was a bit of raised uh, mould line which created a bit of a sort of divot there, so <clears throat> it has um, uh, shown up there as a seam line, so I'll do a little bit more sanding there and uh, possibly a little bit of filler, but I would imagine that will actually sand out looking at it. Um, I did put this on and um, tacked it down, and I did notice that there was a bit of light coming through, there was a bit of a gap underneath, so I just before I went into the next painting stage, I wanted to take that off and I'll, I'll put that back on a bit firmer because uh, I don't want to get any overspray into here. Um, luckily there is no overspray, so that's quite a um, definite line there. So everything's looking pretty good. So I'll clean up that seam, and um, I'm in two minds whether to do pre-shading. I may just do a little bit of black pre-shading just on the panel lines. I'm not going to do it across the rivets, because they're um, endless. I'll pick them up with a wash at the end. Um, so I may do a little bit. I'm not sure. I may use a different colour just to... Um, 
uh, offset the lighter sand colour that's going on top so it gives it a bit of um, difference in the panel lines I might actually make it light, a bit darker around the edges like I said so that's probably what I'll go for so uh, that's where we are there I've uh, pushed on with the painting here as you can see so um, we're just getting in the um, ready for the final coat so I'm going to use these two uh, trusty MRP again ROM 76 underneath and 79 over the top. Um, I have re-riveted on the seam lines and checked and sorted out the seam here and down here and I've put in the panel lines. I've also sprayed the ROM 04 here and on the rudder separate so I gave that a white base to uh, make the yellow go down and come across a bit stronger. Um, I've also finished the uh, propeller so that's um, ROM 70, uh, 70 with a, a white tip and obviously that's 70 again there. So that's those parts ready uh, to come together at the end. Um, so it really is uh, just a case of getting this painted and um, once that's done uh, there's a white stripe that needs to go across the fuselage and then um, into deckling by the looks of it so um i'm just waiting for this to go off it's, it is lacquers but i just want to give it a, another couple minutes just to harden up then i'm going to mask that and give it a tight line uh, it's only that that is yellow on this so that's quite useful it's just a bit on the um, front cowling there and uh everything should be okay after that so um, I've got quite heavy panel line shading here, pre-shading, uh, which I don't usually do, but I thought I would because it's quite um, light colours and it will break it up a bit because it's only one um, colour on both sides. It should add a bit of variation in there, so that's that's the hope. So I will, um, the idea is to kind of fade in, from uh, paint from the middle outwards, so it will give darker edges, make it look more natural. Uh, I've put the cannons in. Um, but I have left out the um, pito tube which uh, goes here because I'm going to knock that off. And um, one limitation to the fineness of the moulding from Edward, where they've got the hollowed out um, cannon ends, uh, on this one there's a bit of a mismould so it is a lot shorter. Which is, you know, it's a bit nitpicky but it does stand out a little bit. There is a difference there. Um, so I may try and put that in at the end, I'm, I'm undecided at the minute, I can probably live with that. So I'll get this one painted and then we can have a look at it um, once that's all on. So as you can see I've uh, moved on quite considerably. Um, I didn't film any of the painting because it's um, really quite straightforward. It was just the two colours, um, the yellow around here, the ROM 04 I'd already shown in the previous stage with um, the pre-shading. Um, I've put the landing wheel and um, uh, the landing gear doors on and uh, they've gone on no problem and I do have the cannons here that run through the uh, wheel bay. I just need to pick them out in a bit of um, uh, sort of gun metal colour. And um, the landing gear is um, fiddly in places but it's pretty um, well thought out uh, you just got to you know it locks into place quite easily so you just dab a bit of um, uh, sort of Tammy or extra fins very good for that and uh, it locks in and you get a good hold um, I've done the propeller as well and put that together so you've got the fans there as well as the um, actual propeller and then the nose cone and that slots into place uh, perfectly here, as you can see there, the fan is quite effective, so I'll glue that in. I might keep that off for transport, I'm a bit undecided at the minute. Um, and now it's into the deckling stage, so everything's on the aircraft apart from um, the, 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 the actual canopy we're going to use in the open position and um, the few bits here from the back of the seat rest that go inside the canopy and um, the uh, the, the sort of foothold there and the pitot tube. So that's the bits <coughs> to go on there. Um, I've shown before the tyres so they sort of clip in uh, very easily. So you've got the wheel hubs there and the tyres so I'm just going to spray those 
um, with a tire black and then those bits clip in as well so that gives you a nice clean um, join there and um, I'm going to paint the tail wheel by hand and then just clip that in and, and we're pretty much there so uh, deckling is um, the next stage then I'll pick out a couple of the details like the cannons and stuff um, then just do a touch of weathering a few pigments and um, that should complete the build Uh, that's the decals complete on this one now. Um, they've gone down really quite nicely. Um, I used the old uh, microset, the microcell, um, to help them go down, but they did actually start to sink into the panel lines and the uh, rivet detail without using that. So they, they are very nice, um, extremely thin. Um, I have had a bit of trouble where there's uh, carrier film 
quite a large amount of carrier film here on the um, top ones. Uh, so I've just sanded them back now with a very fine uh, sanding stick just to break the surface and I've put a bit more micro sole on them and that's starting to eat through quite nicely and I've also cut into the panel lines on some of the decals with a sharp knife just to let that run in um, so that's going which you might be able to see there um, it's gone in quite nicely and it's looking very much like a uh, focke wolf now it's got that sort of traditional imposing um, shape. It's uh, really unusual to see it in the um, Tunisia markings. I'm very fond of that I must admit. Um, it, it really gives it a sort of um, a completely different look and I think the pre-shading has um, worked very well with it as well because of the um, light colours. Um, it was quite hard to get down. I was probably a bit too heavy on the pre-shading. Like I said I don't do it um, very often in fact I think this is the first time I've done it properly um, but once I've worked it in I, I am very much liking the um, finish of this kit this is in my opinion uh, looking like one of the best I've done so far so if we can get through the weathering stage I, I think I'm just going to be quite a, um, a quite a nice build when it's done so uh, I'm going to let these decals dry now overnight uh, I've painted in the details there, so you might be able to see the rubber there on the um, landing gear. I don't know how that shows up just here. It's like a rubber piece of rubber sponge um, for the shock absorber. And I've uh, painted in the cannons now as well, just with an iron colour. Um, I've also painted the wheels. I've just done these by hand for ease because I didn't want to get the airbrush going. So I've just put them through some um, tweezers there just to hold them and painted them with uh, Tamiya Rubber Black so I let that go off uh, and also the tail wheel um, there is a small decal here on the back plate uh, in the cockpit which is um, quite nice and I think I need to do a bit of um, leather brown there just for the headrest and it should be pretty much there so um, I am just going to go probably uh, traditional weathering that I've done in the past, just use the um, flooring model start do it wash make the um, panel lines and the rivets come out I'm not going to go for oil or anything, I don't don't think, this is a pretty um, this is a relatively uh, clean aircraft, it was over painted from what it was delivered in um, so I'm not going to go mental on the um, weathering I am going to use pigments because it's a desert vehicle so uh, it should be quite simple for weathering, so uh, hopefully we'll um, have a look at that once it's all done and um, we'll be near uh, the final reveal then.
So this is uh, pretty much the finished model. Um, you can see now uh, how using the um, Flora Models wash. Uh, certainly on the Edward kit uh, it's very important because it brings out the rivets. So um, really between this stage and the, and the previous stage not a lot has gone on apart from getting that dark dirt colour into the rivets which then gives them a lift and the panel lines and it does transform the look of the aircraft um, immediately. And it's a very simple trick to do if you want to just do minimal weathering or be, you're a bit worried about um, oils or anything. Uh, this gives you the exact effect and it's, it's very very um, uh, it's, a, it's a very um, it's a very impressive effect that it gives and uh, obviously you know from my point of view what have I done here not really much I've, I've put this on quite thick and wiped it off that's that's the long and short of it but what you have got working in your favor is the kit is so heavily detailed and so well engineered and done that a lot of the work's done for you in that stage and also then taking off the wash and just leaving it in the recess um, areas it really does um, really does look good. So obviously if you wanted to take this further now you could start looking at oil washes um, so you could seal this dark dirt wash in then start looking at oil washes and filters and things like that. Um, with the dark dirt wash you do get um, a bit of a filter effect um, not a huge amount because you do wipe it off but uh, there is it has changed the tone of the colour slightly it will have darkened it uh, due to its colour so that's um, always quite good as well, it works in your favour. And you do tend to find you get sort of patchy bits that I like to leave because it's not a problem, you know, it adds to the overall effect. It's never a sort of one um, uh, one complete sort of finish across a, uh, across any aircraft or vehicle or anything when you see it um, in uh, real life. Just seen a bit there in the gun, cha gun channels there. Um, so yeah, I'm very happy with it, and uh, the colour scheme as well it lends very well to this uh, minimal weathering because because it's a light colour, it, it pops very quickly. So what I'm going to do now is put a matte coat on, which is the usual stuff I use, uh, which is the um, MRP Super Clear Matte, which I like. It's it's very nice, very uh, thin, goes on really nicely. Um, that will then coat the canopy here as well, and uh, then the only parts to add are these two bits here just to go inside that canopy once it's um, been matted down and uh, um, unmasked. Uh, this canopy then pops off and a little bit of clean up just if there's any PVA glue around the edges and then we fix this one on and um, yes slight bit of touch up there on the inside if um, there's any sort of marks where the PVA glue has been and um, this one's finished then. It's been a really enjoyable build and uh, it's been quite a fast one as well. This has taken me pretty much just um, about six or seven days. Uh, that was one full Sunday and um, then uh, evenings from then on. So um, it's a really enjoyable kit. We'll have a bit of, of a breakdown at the end and just uh, talk through a few of the final points and then um, there'll be final reveal pictures. So this is... Um, usually the best part of uh, the build when we're starting to get to the end and um, you can see how everything's done so uh, obviously the first part here is hoping that um, the canopy is going to be alright so uh, I'll take that one off first see what we're left with usually Edward canopy masks are pretty good so um, you don't tend to need to worry too much and also um, the one thing you might see here is a bit of the, the flory wash um, gets under it which is fine that will just come off with water uh, the paint MRP being lacquers oh, there you go it's flaking off so remove the actual model out of the way keep it a clean um, space uh, yeah, the MRP being lacquers is quite hard wearing, so um, I'm hoping none of that is uh, made it on. It shouldn't do. It's not the sort of paint that kind of seeps under, because um, you don't flood it usually quite light with putting that on. Uh, this flaking is coming from the um, mask fluid, which tends to happen. This is why um, you can't go 
tight up with it. It's, it's better to use it like Edouard <coughs> want you to. So they do the tight edges and then um, you fill the middle bit in. Because if you go up to the tight edges with masking fluid, sometimes, certainly with Masco and some of the um, lesser ones, uh, they flake off a little bit. So there you go. See, that's uh, pretty sharp there. Um, it's a little bit of clean up just on the inside. That's probably come off of the white tack there. Hopefully that will just... <coughs> Hopefully that will just come out if it's moistened a bit. And just give it a bit of a clean on the outside as well. If you do get any problems like with paint and stuff, something I have found is if you can be um, if you can be in control of it, if you use like a cellulose thinner, that usually really cleans everything up. But You've got to be very careful not to go anywhere near the paint with that. So you just want to have that in very controlled um, areas. So I think that's okay. There is a bit of um, smearing on the canopy there. Which I can't really work out where that's come from. <coughs> yeah, I think that's okay. It's quite realistic to um, if they're not absolutely crystal clear because it does seem that not many of these were in the um, in the actual theatre of war so you know a few blemishes here and there are, I actually tend to prefer than having it crystal clear and then on this one we've got the mask goal which I've used just to uh, plug the gap between the two so hopefully I've managed to keep that on the um, canopy that we're going to throw away and it should leave quite a nice tight line against the front windscreen there. This is a bit of PVA glue. I did see this, this had gone down onto the fuselage a little bit so I am aware that I'm going to have a little grey spot here but that's fine I'm just going to weather that in as if it's a bit of chipping or something. Now hopefully that should just sort of come off nice and easy which it has. So you can see the um, effective masking makes it pretty easy if you do it like that <coughs> and we clear this again to make sure everything stays nice and clean um, so I'm going to take the masks off the front windscreen When it comes off like that and it's worked, it's a very re rewarding part of the um, build. Well, a lot, um, a lot of this has been covered uh, in the video so far, but um, this is a quick little rundown. Uh, the model's completed now, um, as you can see, and it's uh, overall it's been a um, uh, very impressive kit from Edward. Um, there's only, well, n I wouldn't say there's been any problems. Uh, there's been one or two little um, niggly bits that I've covered in the in the in the video. Uh, so if you're building it you might find that will help you with those certain parts um, and uh, I'm very pleased with it. Um, I think I try and I'm not interested in entering competitions um, very much at all but I try and build to that sort of level I find it sort of pushes me I guess that's what I um, uh, base the model on you know how good it is if it's good enough to go in a competition that would make me think oh that must be pretty good um, and if you're thinking to go to the next level then perhaps something you'd want to think about is um, the decals uh, this is only really specific to Edward kits the decals have gone down absolutely superb but because of the amount of rivet detail it's really quite difficult to get the decals into those rivet details. It's fine to get them into panel lines, uh, but I have struggled to get them in there. So I suppose the, the one 
improvement you could do on that is using a mask set, for instance. Um, certainly on these crosses here, where in between is all um, carrier film. That's a particular problem. Um, apart from that, fit is absolutely superb. Um, again, decals have gone down absolutely um, perfectly, if you take the rivet, rivet um, detail bit out of it. Um, and uh, yeah, it's a very impressive kit and I imagine that with future releases from Edward it's only going to get better so um, uh, I think we're really lucky to have this sort of kit coming out now um, and I've done minimal weathering over it like I was mentioning just a bit of um, pigments and to get the, it, the um, A4s and the, the early um, FW190s had quite um, uh, noticeable engine stains so I've tried to replicate that there just with a few pigments and I've pushed some um, desert coloured pigments into the tyres there and uh, a little bit as if it's kicked up on the bottom of the wing. Um, I think the panel line pre-shading that I did was uh, is, is certainly worth it. It's given, it's broken up the um, the, the monotone colour on the top there and um, given it a bit more interest and helped the panel lines uh, pop a little bit and it's certainly um, been quite effective here in the uh, um, on the flaps and the ailerons, so that's quite nice. Uh, and yeah, not much more I can say about it really. Um, incredibly high detail right the way through, straight out of the box. Um, the etch set that comes with it, I think, is uh, some of the best I've worked with. And um, yeah, I'm very happy. Uh, I've I've put um, the aerial line in. It's uh, the the T aerial. That was one of the main differences between the A3 and 4. Um, it went to a T aerial and had the um, antenna uh, point here on the top of the tail. And you do see quite often um, that it's sort of sagged like this. It's sort of bent down and draping when this is pushed back. After having a, a look at it, I'm no expert, but um, as far as I can see, it's on a pulley system. It sort of goes in behind the canopy and then back along the side of the fuselage. So the fact that it's back or forward um, doesn't create tension on here it just runs through the pulley so it's that's the best I that's what I interpreted it to so uh, I've gone for it being quite tight still but that may be wrong um, and yeah so I think that 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 says it all I've done some bill uh, uh, some pictures and uh, shot on manual and I'm I think I'm starting to get some good results with those so uh, hopefully you'll be happy with those that are to come um, and yeah, I think that's about it. There's um, there's more FW190s to come from Edward. Um, I uh, saw a few bits at um, Telford. There was a bit of uh, there wasn't much on the FW190, but you could see they're sort of pointing towards it. I think the Royal Class uh, release that's coming has got includes some um, parts for um, an A2, an A3, and a tropical filter on an A4. So that would be quite useful. Um, and I'm imagining they're going to go right down the line. Um, and this one did, I managed to squeeze this in for Telford, so I built this in under a week, which was a bit of a push, probably stretched it a bit too far with that. Um, so it's had its time in the spotlight, I'm just back now, and um, getting this video up. So um, I'll leave you with some pictures now, and that completes the build, and um, if you like what you see, give the video a like. Leave a comment if there's anything you want to um, let me know, I usually get back to people quite quickly, and... Um, Stay tuned for the next build.